What is good people, I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Wire series. This is episode 7 of season 1 and it is called One Arrest. There's a lot of fucking shit building up now. Obviously, Omar, both Omar's close guys who he was committing those robberies with have been killed by Avon's gang. Uh, obviously, the last one killed was Omar's boyfriend and he is fucking furious. He seemingly has decided to work with the cops. Uh, uh, McNulty brought him into their little uh, office area at the end of last episode, so it seems like he's maybe up for wearing the wire. So maybe Omar will be the person that wears the wire. Regardless, he wants revenge one way or another against Avon for killing his friend. So who knows what's going to happen with that. And then on top of that, they're starting to bug the pay phones and get um, pager numbers and phone conversations recorded. And Daniel's managed to get them an extension on the case by one month as well, which gives them a little leeway to get some more work done. So from here, it is just all building. There's got to be some pipes busting at some point. Let's check out this episode and see what it's saying to it. We gonna start fresh on the latest tomorrow. Down from up north. No problem. No problem? Yeah, you always talking about some guy named Loman. I thought if they're not talking about drugs, they're not allowed to fucking log that shit. I'm assuming that's a really loose rule though, because they don't know what's code and what's not. So surely they'll just listen to everything just in case some of the conversations are coded. But we gonna start fresh on the latest tomorrow. Down from up north. Tomorrow he's gonna start fresh on the latest package. Damn, how y'all hear it so good? They've got it all deciphered already. Turn it upside down. Four hash marks in a row. One for each G-pack. Low for low rises. Fuck, they have got everything figured out. You sit here looking at beeper messages for five hours at a time? I don't know, it's kind of fun figuring shit out. <laughs> That guy is not good at being an actual cop, but as a sort of code cracker and shit, he has definitely found his niche. My advice to him would be, don't leave the office ever, because as soon as you put him in the street with a gun in his hand, he shows his ineptitude, but uh, apparently behind a desk with a crossword puzzle, he's a bit of a dab hand. This month extension might be all they need as well, because just the work they're putting in just now, they're gonna, they can arrest that stinkum right now, because they've got him dropping off four packages, for example. Whether or not he's high tier enough for them to care, who knows, but yeah, they are gonna get a lot of shit done over this next month for these phone conversations and just choose the right moment to strike. There's not a lot of dunkers in there. Oh, Mike. You're good on the dunkers, I'll give you that. Shit comes to dunkers, you saw probably six, seven out of ten. What a stone fucking who done it? That's not a fair assessment, Major. He's basically saying you are shit at your job, bro. I got a detective out there, unsupervised, running his own special ops unit, burning me every chance he gets. It's not my job to fuck another cop. Is that I'm talking about McNulty again? This guy can't wait to fuck over McNulty. Any file. Major, God. Pick a murder and solve it. Bring me McNulty. There's no third choice. I'm truly interested as to what McNulty has done to this guy to infuriate him to this level. Because McNulty, yeah, okay, he has a whiskey in his car from time to time, but he genuinely seems to care about his work and want to do his job. So my only thought is that this guy above him doesn't want him to do his job. But we pull a stink on a car stop now, we got to give up PC, which means we got to give up the wire. We didn't set this whole thing up for two days worth of coke bows, did we? Okay, so the plan is to let Stinkum get go, but uh, after the transaction's been done, they'll get the people to pick up the packages. I don't know if that's a smart idea, because it's still, like, let Stinkum know and the people above him that shit's uh, getting watched, and they might change their shit up. It's a career case, Your Honor. Look here, Jimmy. You misspelled culpable. And you're confusing then and then. Out of all the information they've given him, he fucking becomes a grammar Nazi all of a sudden. It's most commonly used after a comparative adjective or adverb, as in, Rhonda is smarter than Jimmy. Fucking hell. These people do not make it easy for these guys to get their jobs done. I'll sign an order for 30 more days on all taps and clones. One copy to the court. Okay, so he has given them what they want. Oh, that's cool. He didn't have to be such a dick about it. Your professional demeanor and your uh, overall competence stands in stark contrast against the usual municipal backdrop of mediocrity. Fucking hell. McNulty has pissed off absolutely everyone he has come into contact with who's a superior to him. Jesus. I would love to throw a fuck into her. <laughs> Red hair. 
What a way of describing it. Come on, Jimmy. Sit. Talk. What, so now he's being cool? It's now that she left. These people are weird as fuck, man. I wonder if this is gonna go to plan, or if something's gonna go wrong. Again, the one thing I don't like about this show, I mean, that was so fucking obvious. He could have just looked to his left and blown their whole operations cover. Shit. Holy shit, we're getting a chase. He's gonna bail any moment. Oh fuck, that's the guy they blinded, isn't it? That was a well timed block. Yo, oh, shorty, 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 that's the rib, yo! Give it up, son! That was quite comical. Ah oh, shit, they got him as well. I mean, I think that is the same young kid that they blinded for no reason as well. That's so fucked up. 12 away. Need a wagon. Inside the 800 block of Lex. Inside the court. And that's D'Angelo who just lost a lot of business as well. Anyone got a smoke? <laughs> Well, mission accomplished, but uh, I feel bad for that kid, man. I got another week before my homicide shift flips to night work. I'm not back with them. Rawls sticks it to me. Well, you got a friend here. I don't know if I trust this guy. Somebody's hitting Stringer Bell's pager from the number two payphone in the tower court. Now? Now. Isn't he the cop that was wearing, like, a wire and posing as a crackhead one day? What if he's just identified by his face from someone? I mean, he wasn't that disguised. His face is still the same. He got up those stairs like his life depended on it. Yo, we lost four to five home. What? We lost four. Yo, why the fuck are you telling me this? I forget that guy's name, Idris Elba's character, but he's obviously smart enough to know not to discuss too much on the phones, but uh, Stinkum ain't that smart. Can't do shit till I clear this case for Rawls. How old is he? Old and cold. You have to begin with? <laughs> At least that guy's taking a high road and not trying to fuck over McNulty. He's doing the boring, hard to solve cases instead, which is admirable. Madam fucking LaRue, Jay. Better men than you have turned to this lucky lady in their dark night at dead ends. What is this? Is he actually advising him to go and see a psychic? I do not advise that strategy. Unless she's low-key, just like some person that's in touch with the criminal networks and gets her information that way, then pretends to be psychic about it. Because I do not believe in psychics. Merit badge for two good little scouts. Ma'am. You need some help with that? As if they didn't just do it from like their instinct to help. They were like, nice, she'll give us information if she, we help her decrepit ass with her shopping trolley. Ulterior motive having cunts. Y'all hang around the projects, white and black together, ties and jackets on, looking to help ladies with their shopping carts and whatever else. Police, right? She's not stupid. Ma'am? This guy. Wow, I don't even know what to say about his character at this point. He's had a tough break of things, I'll say that much. Detective? I need to pull one out. Yeah, which one? Oh, is she doing him favours now because he's an informant? Attempted theft, dope, dope, theft, dope, and the charge du jour is possession, to wit, cocaine. But you need him. I need him. That is a lot of charges. I don't like seeing that aspect of this life. It's like in Breaking Bad when you have to go and see the meth addicts living in their dirty abodes and shit. It's just a fucking horrible lifestyle and environment. I don't like seeing that guy's lifestyle. Light skin, medium height. Didn't have no meat on him. 
Young or old? One young. Obviously everybody else in that block probably knows of it or heard something about it, but they know who D'Angelo worked for when he did that killing and they know not to say anything about it. The last thing I would want is for something bad to happen to a sweet little old lady. She can't make a positive ID. My man Omar can. <sighs> Stick up artist with a half dozen priors. That's your eyeball witness? Don't know if Omar's quite your man yet, mate. It happened like you said. Like it was a plan. It was a plan. This guy's amazed that pre-planning actually leads to successful results. Instead of just going, you know what we should do? Get in the car right now and go down the tower block and shout up at them, we run the terraces until we get televisions thrown down at us and bullets ring down. Okay, 11M, is that so hard? What's your D.O.B.? Yeah, that is the guy that blinded him. It's him. Who? I hope he fucking feels bad about that. You hungry? Ham and cheese, too. I want a Reese's, yo. Peanut butter cup? Nice. Drink? Tea in the can. Nice choices. Game already cost you, right? More than it should have, I know. Whose fault is that? His. Ours. Mine, maybe. Well, at least he admits it. Motherfucker thinking he can pimp me over a candy bar. This guy's not stupid. Thank God, I was worried he was going to become an informant there just because the episode was titled One Arrest. St. Anthony wants to help you. He does? Very much. St. Anthony Soprano. May he rest in peace. You sure not, Sandy? Go to the victim's grave. God, a guy going to visit a woman with a bunch of weird trinkets. This is like a Tales from the Crypt episode. Then dig it up. Go straight home. When you go to bed, hold it to your ear. And he tells me who did it? Well, if this is the lengths detectives are going to to solve cases, may God have mercy on us all. This is a classy party Daniels is attending. Is this some sort of special policeman's ball or something? State Senator Clay Davis from the 39th District. Vice Chair of the Budget Committee. You never make major at this rate. <laughs> I wonder if he really does have plans for him to be major one day, or if he's just like talking shit trying to make him feel good. Come on, this one. But that's them, Team Cracker back on the street. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to other addicts and practice these principles in all our affairs. It should be optional to go to these forced sort of rehab things, even if you are an addict, because, you know, the people sitting there with their arms folded, not caring and talking amongst themselves, they're never going to pay attention to any of this shit. And people that truly do maybe want to hear some stories and be changed by it all will pay attention. It should be optional, not mandatory. But you know how they always do this scene. They do this scene so the person with their arms folded is actually touched by the speech. Yeah, I'm in here with y'all talking shit about how strong I am, how strong I feel. But my disease is out there in that parking lot doing push-ups on steroids waiting for the chance to kick my ass up and down the street. Damn, that's quite a metaphor. And when it was almost over for me, and I was out there on them corners, not a pot to piss in, and anyone that ever knew me or loved me cussing my name, you know what I told myself? I said, Waylon, you're doing good. Fucking hell. You were in fact not doing good. Whatsoever. I'm here to talk sense. I don't care who you are, what you done, or who you done it to. See, it's always the same. The people with their arms folded initially are the ones that you get a close-up shot of the face of while they're slowly being affected by the person's story. I can't name them offhand, but I've seen this scene before in other things. Six months. Does anybody have three months? Yeah. Well done to her. Three months clean. That is so good to see. Does anybody have 24 hours? Or a sincere desire to live. Good on them. 
I'm assuming he just means he has a sincere desire to live, which is nice to see. I hope he goes clean. I want to see this guy get clean and get out of it and sell fruit and enjoy his life. Not still working with the police, just enjoying his life clean and sober. Always let the Yankees back into it, always. No, they got a bullpen this year. Holy shit, it's my man from the Chappelle show. Name's Damien Price, but I mostly go by Day Day. You said you're Davis. But I mostly go by Lieutenant. Wow, he had the finger snap handshake down instantly. Yeah, take it all off. Rub them together like that. Yeah. Mignot is so drunk. And then you still might have to kiss his ass for about three, four motherfucking months. You, you're gonna have to do it. Three or four months, huh? Bonk's breaking down some hard truths while he's drinking. It's not because you're good police, because, you know, fuck that, right? Yeah, mm, fuck that, yeah. It's not because when I came to homicide, you taught me all kinds of... Fucking hell, this conversation is hilarious. It's because when it came time for you to fuck me, you were very gentle. You damn right. There's a lot of police loyalty going on. Some would say this is the sort of loyalty that leads to police negligence being covered up, so I'm not 100% with this shit. Turk. Can you do one more? <laughs> Coins dropping on the floor. Get a chance, man. Let me pull your coke to something. I got a little move we might could do. So get with me after, okay? All right. Most deaf. Is that guy a superior to him? I don't know if I'd be doing fucking little maneuvers with some random guy that works at the strip club. You didn't had to stick up, then to jump out, not even running up on snake. My crew, we tight. All right? Yeah, they are going to think it's a snitch though to start with until they realise that their pagers and payphones are getting bugged. So go down there today and tell them hoppers you got working for you down there that the shit is about to change. Stringer going to come down there, he's going to run through the changes. Until the shit is straight, the pit is dead. That is exactly what was expected to happen. Avon's just going to cut out that whole issue until he fixes it and finds out what the problem is. So I wonder if doing that whole bust just for four packages and that one arrest and he's not going to snitch was worth it for them. They catch four packs popping out the truck. They don't even get the plate. What's all this shit? Yeah, he knows there's some fucked up shit going on. Avon is so smart. I mean, I wonder how he's going to counter this though. Will they fire back on the police? Everybody knows it's a death sentence to start killing cops. Just fucking send in the feds and all sorts. You're so fucked. Skinny black motherfucking that ass ugly knocker. White boy with the ball cap. The ones with John Bodie? Batman and Robin, yo. Hi. <laughs> 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 Fucking Batman and Robin. They're so proud of those descriptions. These guys are ridiculous. Oh, you sign this for me there, uh, Mr. One Day Man. Cool. I have mercy when they piss you, boy. I hope he stops. I don't want to see him keep doing this. I hate seeing these environments. I hate seeing fucking people about to shoot needles in dirty crack dens. He has literally buried the fucking angel. He's following the psychic's orders to the T. Be much obliged to stick my gun straight in their mouth. How that work? Surely the police aren't going to allow Omar just to start killing them, though. That's why I don't like him working with him. Bro, gets high? But not in the towers, he don't. Avon ain't having his people using it. That's another rule. Never get high on your own supply. Shouts to Notorious B.I.G. and the classic The Ten Crack Commandments, where that let it comes from. Check it out. I know one thing, when y'all run up on them, y'all best be more careful, that is. Why is that? Oh, Bird will throw down without thinking, for sure. He's giving them all the information. I don't like how Omar's just switching sides like this. One second he's the most vigilante robber of all time, and then it takes a couple deaths of his friends, and now all of a sudden he is singing like a canary. Where the shop at? None today. Well, see, that's the thing, cuz if you need more of that, I got this connect. So this guy is, like, working at Avon Strip Club while trying to operate his own side business. This guy is fucking dead. 
It's not going to end well for this dude at all. Got enough to turn a New York court on it, but you know, I don't have what you got right here with the distribution. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Stop talking like this. If D'Angelo was smart, he would straight away tell Avon. If not, it will be a death sentence for both of them. I'm out. Be good. Think on that. If D'Angelo thinks on that for even one second, he is the stupidest motherfucker in this whole operation. 100% he should tell Avon straight away that that guy's trying to side cut his business. That can end bad in a bazillion ways. If they start doing it now, while the terrace has been locked off by Avon, straight away someone's going to be like, yo Avon, they're still in, still dealing shit down by the terraces. And he's going to know. Alternatively, the police, who are still monitoring the terraces, will hear that there's another operation and bust them a second time. And Avon will know, and people will get arrested. There is no outcome from that that will end well. That's not good, he's starting to do cocaine. Mm -hmm. Never seen one of them in the UK, a little rotating door to get your goods out of. That's cool. So he's posing as just like a drunk. Straight away took the hat off, he doesn't give a shit about your hat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fucking hell, bottled him. Is that Fred Rose Star? I think I can tell by his voice it's Fred Rose Star. Daniel's always has such a smug smock on his face when something goes right for his division. Right? Yeah, yeah. leave that shit right there. Nice and straight. I like how they're grand designing the position of their outdoor sofa. I got no cell phones, no house phones neither, right? Nah, man, nothing but these pages and them pay boxes over there to sit. Oh shit, has he just realised? Tell about them phones. From now on, y'all need a pay phone, you walk a few blocks and do not use the same phone more than once a day. You hear me? Smart move. He's the first one that's noticed that something's up with the pay phones. Well, aside from Avon, who just as a rule doesn't fucking use the same pay phone every day, but that's more so his paranoia than, um, you know, him actually realising what was happening. Otherwise, he would have had those pay phones destroyed immediately. We, we wanted to hang the velvet backdrop with the Lexus and the pit bulls. It is Fred Rostar. I fucking knew it by his voice. Fuck you, fat man. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, fat man. I thought we were friends. Oh, that guy. He does crack me up sometimes. You up for that? Suck my dick, dyke cunt. Where's my lawyer at? Freak. Wow. Cunt eater. <laughs> He's not giving a fuck. Give me this hand back. Step to me and I'll fuck you all three holes. Fucking charm of this one. Bitch. Biatch. I love this guy's relentless fucking not giving a shittery. I remember you was the first brother I ever seen play that sport with a stick. Uh, what's it called? Lacrosse, man. The show. Yeah. <laughs> I was all Metro Attack. Prep school boys used wow. to pee themselves. As if he knows them from all the way back then. What else you got in the way of open murders? Going to Barksdale? Going anywhere. How far back you want me to go? As far as you need. Murder stay murder. Omar's about to give them so much shit. He must hear about everything that's going on. You're done, Bird. Last chance to grab a little something for yourself on a deal. Eat my shit first, you downtown white whore. He just uh, is not giving a fuck to the end. Yo, I'm cuffed, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> you at least give me a fair chance, right? Yo, come on, man. Don't do me like that, man. That is fucked up. I don't want to see that shit. I don't care how rude he was. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'll be damned. First, I know how to bring it out of people, don't he? Oh, I can't condone any of that. That's some absolute bullshit. 
No one wants to watch police brutality. I don't care how rude he was. He didn't assault them. <laughs> oh my god, so that was the case the guy had to get. The psychic lady's shit worked perfectly. I was not expecting that to happen. I gotta thank you, Jay Bird. You saved my fucking life here. The only thing I can't figure is I asked for help on the Lindsay case, not this one. Hey, Mike. Fuck the gypsy shit. These are the guys that saved your ass right here. I agree. The guy shouldn't look too much into the psychic lady being right. Hey, Jimmy. We gotta talk, man. Oh, he's gonna tell him. Why would Rawls have such a deep fucking hatred for this guy? I just don't understand it. Why would they do it? There must be a reason why Rawls hates him so much. Alright, so that was episode 7 of season 1 of The Wire, One Arrest. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, One Arrest, what did I think of that? Well, I don't know why they decided to do that bust on the guy who got out of Stinkham's car with the four packages because that's a really low level guy he wasn't gonna say anything and now Avon has switched up his whole shit on top of that he's also now clocked that the payphones are suspect they've been destroyed decreasing their chances of getting any intel over the phone in the future so it's nice to see that Avon's crew is finally smartening up and twigging on uh, also we saw obviously Avon cut off the terraces he says nothing's happening here D'Angelo and that guy from the strip club are trying to do something on the side which will only 100% end badly. I mean, if D'Angelo has any brain cells left in his fucking head, he will not do that. There is no way Avon will not find out about it, and he will die, or at least the uh, strip club guy will die, and D'Angelo will be severely punished for doing that. Omar is giving them everything they want to hear. Uh, he's basically just an informant at this point, which is a shame. I preferred his character, like I said last episode, I prefer his character as like the lone wolf. But he's not that just now. He's in full cooperation with the police. He's given Bunk all these backlogs of murders and shit like that. He's given them all so much intel. He's actually going to be better for them than the payphones in the future. And yeah, McNulty found out that Rawls is after him. I mean, I'm sure we're going to be told, but I just now I have no idea why he's doing that. Maybe in the future that will be revealed also. All in all, a great episode. I can feel the tension building up now. Some shit is going down every episode now. And what I don't even know if we're halfway through season one but i'm assuming it's still just going to build and build from here i thoroughly enjoyed it everyone all the performances were dope as usual the one thing i did not enjoy was seeing bored after he was captured beaten by four police officers while he was handcuffed they need to cut it out with that police brutality shit because i do not enjoy watching it if you have enjoyed watching this click like Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and ring the bell if you want to be notified as to when they are dropping. If there's anything you want to talk about from anything we just watched or anything you want to see me react to in the future or even just shooting the shit, comment down below. And share this video around to anybody you think might appreciate it or want to watch this series along with us. My Patreon is now live. If you become a Patreon, you get access to polls so you can vote on what I will watch in the future. You get access to these reactions weeks and weeks in advance and you also get access to full-length versions of all the reactions that I post on YouTube. They're all up on the Patreon in their full-length entirety. So consider becoming a Patreon. It helps me and the channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA. Peace.